The question where is the button has been asked from time to time not only by gangster boss stump, but also by many ordinary people. However, ordinary people are more interested not in the method of control, but in how the president's nuclear suitcase works. Let's try to understand some of the mysteries of this device. On June 6, 1984, there was a momentous event in the Soviet Union about which only a few in the country learned a nuclear suitcase Chejit was adopted for military service, one of components of the Kazbek nuclear arms control system. In fact, this system is a means of retaliatory strike, which activates only in case of confirmed missile aggression against our country. The nuclear suitcases themselves are not one, but three. The first one is with the president, and the other two are with the minister of defense and the chief of the general staff, respectively. A retaliatory nuclear strike is possible with at least two signals from different suitcases, and there are reports that all three, so that the president alone will not be able to take on the reduction of any state. The decision to create a single complex for controlling the entire nuclear potential of the country was made at the initiative of the general staff back in the 1970s. This was partly a forced measure, the potential enemy, the United States, had such a system for quite a long time. Most importantly, the American Pershing began to be based in Western Europe, and from there the flight time was only five minutes. In addition, the introduction of a single nuclear weapons control system gave almost an absolute guarantee against unauthorized launch of a nuclear missile. How the Suitcase Nuke Works the principle of operation of the Kazbek nuclear complex is very different from how most people imagine it. First of all, aggressive actions with its help are impossible, Kazbek is in an inactive state almost all the time. Only a confirmed missile attack on the country turns the system on. So far, it is reliably known about the only switching of the nuclear suitcase into the active state. On January 25, 1995, a large meteorological missile was launched from Norwegian territory. The Norwegians acted according to all international rules and put the Russians on notice of the launch of the scientific missile. However, the information about this launch was lost either in the military or in the foreign ministry. That is when Yeltsin used the Cheget communication system to negotiate with army officials. The problem was quickly solved. There is also some information, still on the level of gossip, that there was a case when the early warning system mistook a big flock of D's for a massive American missile attack. But it was quickly dealt with. The order in which the nuclear suitcase is turned on is as follows, the first thing that comes in is a signal of a missile attack from the early warning system. The information about a possible missile attack is necessarily checked by the officer on duty at the command post in Solnechnogorsk. As soon as the duty officer is convinced of the reality of the attack, he confirms the data of the early warning system, after which the Kazbek is switched to the active state. At this point, the owner of the Cheget has the ability to communicate with the missile forces and transmit an encrypted message about the missile attack or simply to contact military officials. So, in fact, the nuclear suitcase is a telephone for top commanders, only not voice, but transmitting information by coded radio signals. There are many more than a single nuclear suitcase themselves. Some Chejitovs are in reserve, some are being upgraded, and three are in the hands of Russia's top military leaders, or rather, the officers accompanying them. There is information that Boris Yeltsin received a nuclear suitcase with serial number 51. This angered the head of state, and since then the president has been assigned Sheget 1. As mentioned earlier, the Kazbek system cannot be triggered without permission of the highest military officials of the state. And flight time of missiles with nuclear warheads is 15 minutes, even across the ocean. In addition, Chejitov carriers and command posts can be disabled. There is a fully automated perimeter system for this case, which will launch a retaliatory strike without any involvement of important army officials. In the West, this system has earned the grim nickname, the Dead Hand. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.